Hi there guys, welcome to part 2 of my Box Preds Answers video. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, we've got through the first half of the questions, took around 35 minutes in part 1, but like I said, if you are going to make the effort to give me a question, then I'm going to make the effort to give you a third answer. Just answer question 8, let's go on to question 9. We've got Boxing Wheel Talk here. He's uh, given me a question. He's a really good channel on YouTube. Uh, that's Boxing Wheel Talk, all one word. So check him out. He's got some good videos. Subscribe to his channel. I do recommend him. He says, Who takes these fights, in your opinion? Riddick Bowe versus Joe Frazier and Roberto Duran versus Aaron Pryor at £140. Two really good fights. The first one, let's look at Riddick Bowe against Joe Frazier. Um, uh, height difference. Um, Riddick Bowe is 6'5", Joe Frazier is 5'11 and a half. Um, I know Ali was 6'3", and Frazier was able to beat him in their first fight and give him hell in the rest. Um, I really am a big fan of Joe Frazier, I think he's an all-time great. Um, I really enjoyed um, looking back, watching videos of his, and um, I think he was a tremendous boxer, a tremendous fighter. And I'd, um, I'd, I'd have to edge this with Joe Frazier by decision. <clears throat> I actually think it'd be a really good inside fight, because um, although you'd expect Riddick Bowe to keep it on things on the outside, I don't think he was a very... Um, a guy who was that difficult to get close to. Um, I think uh, Joe Frazier wouldn't have that much difficulty getting into the inside. But I also believe that Bo had an inside game. He was pretty good at fighting inside. Um, so I think that uh, Joe Frazier would um, win it basically being the more busier looking fighter because of his bobbing and weaving in style. I think he'd look better to the judges. I think it'd be a really closely fought contest. I think it'd be a, probably a fight of the year candidate, to be honest with you. Really good um, inside fight. And um, I'd edge it to Joe Frazier because I think he'd look busier. And I think uh, taking nothing away from Bo, tremendous boxer, really, I do rate him as well. A <clears throat> really good fighter. Um, obviously, only lost the one fight, and, and that was by decision to Holyfield, I believe. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'd go for Joe Frazier in that one. And uh, Duran, Roberto Duran against uh, Aaron Pryor. With this one, I probably say it depends on how Aaron Pryor came into the fight, you know, the style, the tactics he used, because. Um, in the same way that Sugar Ray Leonard, depending on what tactics he used against Duran. Um, you know, in the first fight, in the brawl in Montreal, which was around this weight, I know it was welterweight, I think it was 145, and this is the question, and this was about 140, but I don't think there's that much difference. I think, um, you know, with the brawl in Montreal, Sugar Ray Leonard tried to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Roberto Duran, and he lost. It's something you don't, re don't really want to do. Um, you shouldn't underestimate Roberto Duran's um, hand speed, he had, you know, good hand speed at this weight, and um, I think that this would be a really good uh, fight. I think if um, um, Aaron Pryor, we saw him come in fast, very front-footed, bombing out there, trying to be on the front foot against Alexis, Alexis Arguello um, in their great fights, and I think that if he came out against Roberto Duran like that, that would be make for a really interesting comp competition, and Duran would have a chance to catch him, um, and I probably favour Duran in that, because um, I think that plays as Duran's, Duran's strengths. But I think that Pryor would come out and try and dance all night. I think he would, you know, keep on the outside. He wouldn't be flat-footed, he'd be up on his toes, dancing around, keeping the fight outside. And I would advise him to taunt Duran, and I think that's what he'd try and do. Just like uh, Sugar Ray Leonard was able to do in the remaining fights against uh, Duran, <clears throat> even making Duran quit. Um, I think he'd frustrate Duran uh, Pryor. I think he'd win a decision. And if the fight was a 15-rounder, I think he'd probably possibly get a late stoppage against Duran um, because he was able to, you know, he was, he was, at, he was a really skillful outside boxer, really skillful uh, dancing, but like I said, if he, just, if he decided to mix it up, it would be a hell of a fight, and that would actually be a, an all-time classic, wouldn't it? Um, you know, because you can tell Pryor would probably, at some point at least, really go in, try and mix it up with uh, Duran, and we all know Duran, uh, when he gets into tear-ups. That would be a quality fight, actually, but I would edge it to uh, Pryor, actually. Next question, question 10, comes from 362184. He says, Wingy is the reason, uh, Wingy is why I just subscribed to your channel a while ago. A while ago. Um, he means UK Wing Chun students. Um, anyway, anyway, questions for you. Your views on Box Nation, Sky TV, Frank Warren, Channel 5 and the British Boxing Board. And has anyone any idea what the Hatton Camp are doing? I presume you're referring to Hatton Promotions. <coughs> Big up the Big Wingy. Uh, yeah, once again, thanks to UK Wings and Tunes for sending guys my way. Just another example of a guy who's, who's subscribed to my channel and watched my videos based on the recommendation from UK Wings and Student. 
answer your questions first of all box nation i think um you know box nation is a new uh box dedicated boxing channel here in the uk um i think it's been very good early on you know the signs are all good they've shown some really good boxing matches it's really nice to have a dedicated boxing channel here in the uk um it's not too bad the price 10 pound a month for the boxing the matches they've shown and you know we've had guys like prime time trying to show pay-per-view boxing before and these guys have used these trying to do these, do these things before it's nice to have box nation come along and do it in the right way they seem to be doing things you know right correct and i think uh, it bodes well for the future i hope they keep working on this hard sticking with the you know good fight schedules they're having and yeah i think it's it's, it's done nothing but promote and you know um really improve boxing it's challenging sky which is a good thing and i think the box nation has been really good good for boxing in the uk in, in general um so you know i'm not not a, a huge fan of steve bunce that's just a man, matter of opinion um but you know no question he's pretty good at what he does and he does a lot of the presenting on box nation but i think all in all they've done a really good job with box nation sky tv um you know um when adam smith took over at sky tv sky sports boxing as head of boxing we thought you know he's going to really fight for boxing to be on um <coughs> more 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 basically more boxing on sky sports more top fights and really uh you know because of the, the boxing scene in, in the uk sort of dwindled after oddly harrison you know the bbc stopped showing bo pro professional boxing altogether and they've not shown anything since um and sky tv you know for a while when he started i thought this is going good you know but as of late, you know, they've had to drop uh, promotional companies. I believe they dropped Hatton Boxing, if I'm correct, if I remember rightly, a few months ago, and some other promoters. That's not good news. Um, it just, you know, it uh, seems like Adam Smith was uh, more focused on his book, sending his book, than he was of trying to fight for us boxing fans on Sky. You know, you've got uh, sports like Sky have now opened a dedicated F1 channel, uh, Formula One, which I'm also a fan of. I enjoy watching Formula One. <clears throat> it'd be nice to have something that, you know like that in boxing but i guess we've got box nation but it'd be nice to have that included in your sky package <clears throat> they've done a good thing with ringside bringing ringside back i think that's a good addition enjoy ringside on sky so they're doing a good job there um and they do so it show, still show you know show some good fights but you know how long will this 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 last it seems like a wave came of good good stuff good future looking for first boxing on sky and it sort of dwindled a bit and um, I don't know. They're still fighting it out with Box Nation, but I think there's healthy competition there. Um, I just I've been a bit less convinced by Sky as of late to do with boxing. But you know, you don't know at the moment. We'll see how it goes. Channel Five. Uh, well, no. Firstly, Frank Warren. Um, don't really have that much of an opinion on the guy. Really, I mean, he's been in promotion for years. I don't like boxing promoters in general. Um, I think. Um, a lot of them have hindered the sport over the years, but again, you, you could argue that without them, a lot of things wouldn't happen. Um, he's been really uh, contested. He's had a lot of competition as of late, from particularly from matchroom sports with Eddie Hearn, and uh, you know, uh, he's still one of the top promoters in the UK. Uh, he <clears throat> he seems to have some good intentions. I, I I can't really find a lot of bad things to say about the guy as of late. Um, don't really have that much opinion but you know um i i i think you know he put on the chisora hay fight um and for good reason i don't see why not um i didn't see what the massive fuss over that was about this is boxing um but yeah that's really my opinion nothing really against the guy um he's got a lot of competition on his hands in terms of pro promoters now coming through um but he's always been one the top promoter in the uk and um guess he'll continue to do so Channel 5 I think is great, showing boxing on Channel 5 now, I really, um, I'm glad Terrestri boxing is back on terrestrial television, I'm a big supporter of it, I'm not a big fan of uh, pay-per-view, going back to Sky, when they were showing pay-per-view fights and showing adverts, in the break, you know, the 30 second, whatever, one minute break between rounds, that was diabolical, that's something I really didn't agree with, and something I really hated, the fact they would be that greedy to take advertisements because people are paying for the pay-per-view to watch that fight and then they want to put advertisements in the break between rounds as well that was pure greed and i disagree with it and i always will disagree with it 
I don't agree with pay, pay per view for boxing in general. I think it's a sport, and if you've got something like Sky Sports, which you pay a subscription for anyway, I believe you should get that included in your um, your subscription regardless. I don't agree with pay-per-view of boxing anyway. That's just my opinion. Um, so, you know, moving back, it's great to see boxing on terrestrial television on Channel 5. <coughs> um, you know, Tyson Fury, is, his career has been um, improved from being on Channel 5. Um, I think, you know, it's just good to, to raise the profile of boxing. I think it's been really good. Um, I'm just glad that, that uh, they're showing boxing. I think it's a really great thing. The British Boxing Board needs to be revamped, in my opinion. Um, I'm not totally clued up on, the, on them, but I believe they're an independent body who are self-regulated or something. Really, they don't answer to anyone. They just do whatever the hell they like, and they don't really um, have to answer. They don't, re they don't... Basically, there's been a lot of argument that they don't ask, they don't um, conversate on issues with boxers and professionals in the game, managers, etc., they basically just they don't they're not really answerable to anyone, and that needs to change because that's when things get dangerous. You know that's when pe they t people start doing whatever the hell they want, and uh, it's not good for boxing. They should need to be a, if they're a governing body, they need to be they need to be answerable to at least have people listen to people. They don't seem to listen to people. Um, quite frankly, with the hate Chisora thing, they can't complain because they didn't ban Chisora. Um, and therefore, he was fully legally entitled to go and uh, license himself with the Luxembourg Federation. Frank Warren sorted all that out. He's sharp. He's a promoter. He knows what he's doing. He asked them, actually, can we do that? And they said, yes, you can do it. He went and did it. They have no argument. So, you know, the BBVFC is a long-standing whatever, but these organisations nowadays, <clears throat> I really don't care about them, really. Um... I care about boxing in the ring. I don't really. I, I I do. I'm aware of issues surrounding these promoters and these companies and these governing bodies and you know these title givers like WBC, WBO, etc., etc. And I do have a little bit of an opinion on them, and I think they 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 adversely influence the sport quite a lot. But in, really, I try and focus on the boxing more than <clears throat> than them. But the BBVFC. There needs to be something done there to revamp their whole structure and their policy and the way they run. I don't think it's good going forward, really, the way they are. Um, <coughs> I'm not really sure what the Hatton Camp is doing myself, so that's a good question. Um, they, they're only new, they're starting up, you know. I know they've got Ricky Hatton at the spearhead, he's the big name. It's, it's his promotional company, but, um, you know, like any company, they're starting out, they're going to face hiccups, they're going to be... They're going to do things in the wrong way. They're going to make mistakes. Only time will tell whether they're successful or not and how big they become. Um, I wish them all the best. Um, they're trying to make money. They're trying to um, you know, get into the boxing game and give young guys a, a chance. And um, let's see how it goes. So I hope that answers the question. Um, moving on to question 11. <clears throat> this is from Mr. Colbert, 187. That's Miss Mr. Uh, C O L B U R T one eight seven. I might be wrong here, but I think Mr. Colbert might be one of my mates on Twitter as well. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure on that, but I think uh, he may be on Twitter. Um, in that case, thanks for the question. Always a good guy to chat boxing with. <coughs> Sorry, guys, I've, I've got a cough. That's why I've been coughing for all the videos. I've got a tickly cough and I'm trying to stop it. But he says, "All right, mate. Question one." When is the last time you picked an underdog to win and they did? I think this qualifies. I actually picked Zab Judah to stop Vernon Palace. Vernon Palace was undefeated. A lot of people felt he beat Judah. I looked at about two minutes video footage of Vernon Palace and came to the conclusion that Zab Judah was going to knock this guy out. Or at least TKO. Um, I put money on it and I made some money off it. That's the last time I really uh, picked an underdog. I think that qualifies. You might have an opinion and not think he was an underdog in that fight. I think he was. Um, I made a prediction calling it. Um, it's just one of these fights you just see it happening and, and maybe a lot of people don't, but I felt the Palace was there for the taking. He left himself too open when he came in. And a guy with the speed of Zab Judah and the, and, and the ability to stop guys, I felt that Zab Judah was going to finish him. <clears throat> so that's probably that's my answer to the first question. And... Um, 
Question two, why do you think iTunes is rubbish? I mentioned on Twitter a while ago that iTunes is poor. Basically, it's a slow and clumsy piece of software. I find it really slow. I find it really um, annoying, frustrating. And I feel like Apple forces me to use it, you know. I, I don't buy into all this crap about Apple being a cool brand and, you know, the alternative to Microsoft, all the stuff these Apple followers kept saying that Microsoft tried to monopolise the whole thing. Apple are doing exactly the same thing. They're only there to make, you, make money off you, for you to spend money. I got an iPhone, you okay? It's wonderful. I think it's great. The hardware is fantastic. iTunes is a software that, in my opinion, someone who just is a casual user and doesn't want to go looking for these other, you know, other ways of getting around things, I'm pretty much forced to use iTunes. And I think it's, it's, it's a disgrace. I think it's stupid. Um, I just think it's a poor bit of software for such a good piece of hardware, really. Um, if you look, I got a Sony, um, <coughs> a Sony MP3 player, which I use for running. I plug that in. I I just have an interface that comes up, I double click it, it comes up with a box, I drag and drop the music I want into the box, and it puts it on the MP3 player in an instant. With iTunes, I got converted from an MP3 to WAV file or whatever the AVI file, whatever they are. Um, you know, they got a, they got their own file format for the start. That's if that's not you know, that's trying to stop access, that's trying to limit things, you know. They don't want to use what everyone else has, they want to use their own. Um you know, it's just it's just a really convoluted process of trying to put music onto my friggin' iPhone. I can only use one iPhone with one laptop, all that nonsense, you know. I just really don't agree with the whole thing. And I think people need to wake up. If they think, you know, Apple is just some amazing company that's all for the good of the earth, it's not like that. <clears throat> I just think iTunes... I like I like the iPhone and the iPods. I just don't like iTunes. I think it's, it sucks. <clears throat> Really simple question from Fun Guy Small, who has been around for a while, commenting on my videos. Fun Guy Small, F U N G U G U Y S M A L L. Can you speak Welsh? Unfortunately, no, I can't speak Welsh. I'm from Cardiff. While there are quite a lot of Welsh speakers from Cardiff, I won't deny it. There are Welsh schools in Cardiff. <clears throat> Where I was brought up, it wasn't. It was just English speaking. It's the way it is. Never really had felt the need to. Um, did Welsh at, throughout school, had Welsh classes, and had, but but when it came to GCSEs, it was our choice um, whether we took Welsh, and um, I I didn't take Welsh. I chose not to take it. Um, um, you know, you some people felt it was important. I I personally didn't. A lot of my my classmates didn't. Um, we just never really spoke Welsh. That's the way it is. Maybe you would like to, you know, it's my uh, home country and I would like to speak Welsh, but in the same way I'd like to speak Italian or French or German, I'd like to speak another language. It's just taking the time to learn it, you know. Um, question 13, from boring, boring, boring. That's boring, 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 with two extra Gs on the end. All one word. <coughs> he says, keep going making the preds. Maybe you could do some technique demonstrations like Ragu. In this instance he's referring to Big Ragu who's a really good channel here on YouTube. I put this as a question because it's kind of a suggestion of, uh, for my channel so thank you for your suggestion mate. I'm always open to suggestions for the channel. <coughs> um, I'd have to say um, that no I won't go moving forward I wouldn't I won't do boxing demonstrations basically because I'm unqualified. I've never really had um, uh, boxing training. Obviously he's been on a heavy bag and done mitt work um, but I've never done like um, being taught boxing techniques, different punches. I can I've just gained knowledge from watching boxing and being a fan, and um, I've not got specific knowledge. I believe that if Ragu is doing that, then obviously he must have some sort of boxing experience physically, and I think you know all the best to him for doing that. That's a great thing to do. Um, but I don't think I'm qualified to go to to tell you guys, you know, um, give you demonstrations on different punches and stuff. Um, it's not really uh, something I'm qualified to do. Um, but I am a firm believer that if you're a fan of boxing, and you study the box, art of boxing, then you can you can you can give your opinion, and that's what I like to do on my channel. So thanks for the question, mate. But I have to pass on that one. Um, question fourteen from All Natural Hemp, A W -L, L N A T U R A L H E M P, All Natural Hemp, all one word. In your opinion, will Boutte come back better than ever, or did Froch expose major weaknesses? that other fighters will take advantage of in the future. 
<coughs> in a brief answer, mate, I choose a second, the latter. I think that he will come back okay, but I don't think he'll have a fantastic career, you know, being the best and unbeaten for the rest of his career. I think he will be beaten again, providing he goes and fights top opposition and he has a pretty decent career from here on out, you know, in terms of length and number of fights. I think he will lose again. I think if he fights Andre Ward, he will lose. I think Foch may beat him in the rematch, you know. I think that's a difficult fight for him to win now. Um, I think he, if he comes back and, you know, has confidence, I think he'll be a, a good calibre fighter. I think he'll go forward and he'll win a lot of, beat a lot of top guys. But he, he, may, he will lose one or two. And I think he won't ever be, you know, the best. I don't think he'll be the best. I think he'll be, a, you know, a top five guy. And I think he'll have a, a, a pretty good career. But I don't think we'll be talking of him as an all-time great. Or, uh, you know, I don't think he'll come back and win every fight and be amazing, you know. I think that um, he, he he won't struggle either. But he'll be okay. I think he'll just be a really good fighter. Moving here on out. So the last question comes from Davey131, D-A-V-Y-131. He says, I'd like to ask you what you think of Carl Frampton and how do you think he's going to fare against his toughest fight to date, Kiko Martinez? And why do you think the Quig fight, that Scott Quig, never happened? Thanks in advance, Davey. Well, thanks for the question, bud. You know, Carl Frampton, I see him in the, in the same light as I see Cal Brook. He just doesn't excite me, you know. He does a lot right in the ring. He doesn't do much wrong. He has a good technical base and he's... He keeps it, plays it quite safe, but he doesn't really excite me and make me want to watch him every time, you know. Um, I think he's a good boxer, and obviously he's got a lot to prove yet. Um, Kiko Martinez is going to be his toughest fight to date. He's for the European Championship against the kind of champion. I think uh, Cal Frampton can outbox him and win a decision in this one. Um, as Provided that he sticks to the game plan and sticks to the boxing. I, you know, I think Martinez will prefer to be a bit of a tear-up, because Martinez can... He can really have a good tear-up with you. And I think he wants this to be a bit more mixed up. Whereas Frampton needs to start, try and stay a bit, keep a bit of a distance and use his boxing skill. And just really try and play it safe, you know. Um, <clears throat> but I think he, he'll do it. I, I, you know, In my mind now at this time, obviously I have to do a prediction video. But I think Frampton will win. I think he'll do it by decision. I think you'll get the title. Um, but like I said, you know, he does a lot right in the ring. He's hyped a lot because of Barry McGuigan. Um, who, you know, always bigging him up since day one, saying he's amazing and stuff. Um, you know, you can't... I'm really careful with guys now being hyped up, especially young guys, you know. You, you don't know until they fight the best how they're really going to be. Um, they might look really good against these these other fighters who are, you know, not very good. Um, but when they come up against real quality champion opposition for titles, then they may come unstuck. So, you know, the jury's still out, but... Um, Quite frankly, I think the Scott Quigg fight didn't happen for the reasons that were mentioned. I think Quigg is <coughs> Quigg and Quigg decided to fight Munro, who shouldn't have been overlooked. I picked Munro to beat Quigg. Um, Frampton, you know, they were blowing him up a post fight, trying to call out Scott Quigg. And I think Scott Quigg was perfectly in his right to just say, "Well, you know, you haven't proven anything. Why should I fight you?" And I think, you know, I believe that. I think that Frampton needs to, you know, Frampton is just beaten Prosper Ankara, who he demolished and who really shouldn't, you know, had no place in there with him. And then he's trying to call out Scott Quigg. But, you know, you really have to fight, you know, work your way up. You know, just because McGuigan thinks you're amazing doesn't mean you are. Doesn't mean the rest of us are sold. So we're not sold on, on Frampton, many of us. Um, many of us are. Um, I think he's very promising. He could be, you know, the best thing since sliced bread, like McGuigan says. But I've yet to see it. And... Only time will tell. You know, he needs to take his time. I think I'd like to see Scott Quigg have a, the rematch with Monroe because the first fight was really disappointing with that cut stoppage. And I'd like to see, you know, maybe even the loser of that facing uh, Frampton, provided Frampton gets past Martinez. Um, so moving forward, there's some really good fights there. But I think, you know, Frampton just needs to... They're trying to push him into fights. He, you know, he doesn't really need um, at this time. He, he needs to... Like, this is really good now that he's fighting Martinez. This is, like, the type of fight he needs to fight and prove himself against, you know, top opposition. Um, so, uh, I think that's why the fight didn't happen, simply because Monroe and Quigg were fighting. And that was just a natural fight to happen. I think maybe after that fight, if they'd had a 
solid conclusion then they would have said you know let's fight let's go for Frampton but at that time I think it was just a natural thing to do to have that fight on um, but the division is good for the, here in the UK at the moment and Frampton's definitely one of the guys in the mix so I hope that answers your question I've come to the end of the questions and my answers now um, it's been a long <coughs> a bit of a long slug um, long slog and uh, thanks for tuning in and sticking with me this this far if you have um, so I hope I answered all of your questions uh, thanks you thank you again for asking the questions um, and this is Boxpad I'm out